Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. In this video, I will be attempting to explain what Jesus was trying to say to us in this beatitude. Have you, you watching, ever hiked through the desert or over a mountain? Or have you ever gone without water for a day or two? How did it feel? I'm sure you got that urge to say, okay, I'm thirsty. And you went to fill your thirst. You went to quench your thirst, as they say. Or have you ever been hungry? You have not ate all day. And you feel very, very hungry. You, I'm sure you want to go eat. Now, here in the Bible, Jesus is speaking to us how we can understand him. And that's what he does. He meets us where we are and helps us to understand his word. Now in this beatitude, Jesus was speaking to a people who could relate to him exactly what he was talking about. In that time, the rainfall, it was very low. It was about 26 inches per year, very low. And these people would have, have to go to the well for water. They knew what it felt like to go without water. Now look, in the book of Genesis chapter 12 and verse 10, where it spoke about Abraham, when Abraham had to leave where he was to go down into Egypt, there was a famine in the land. Just picture it. You're living somewhere. You had to leave that place to go somewhere else because there is no water where you are. Now, also, I want you to picture Ishmael and his mother when they left Abraham's place. When they left Abraham's place, they went into the wilderness and it came to a point where the mother, she did not want to see her son die because they were at the point where they were about to die. Now picture that. You are in a position where you are so thirsty to the point of death. I'm sure you're watching I'm sure most persons, especially in modern time, if you're living in like a first world country or even a third world country, you might not experience that in your lifetime. But here we're seeing where this Ishmael and his mother, they were dying of thirst. And that's what Jesus wanted to relate to us. And I hope you're following me as I go along with this because I'm getting somewhere. Jesus wanted to, us to understand the basis of how we should be seeking after righteousness. And the Bible said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. And this metaphor, it was deliberately used as I've gone over before. When you're hungry, you go eat. And when you're thirsty, you go drink. And what Jesus was talking about, as I say, in that time it was, this metaphor was used because persons could have related to it. They could have said, oh, I've been thirsty before. So I know what Jesus is talking about. When I'm thirsty, I go seek water. Now, take your Bibles up, and you should have your Bibles because on this channel, I use the Bible. And there's a link in the description for you to go and download one. We're going to read Psalm chapter 42, verses 1 and 2. And it says to us, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? So Jesus is referring to the hungering and the thirsting of the soul here. Only those who long for righteousness with the eager anxiety of a man starving for lack of food or famishing for want of water will find it. So are you seeing the picture? You are starving for food. What you do, you try to survive and you go get food. You're thirsty. You go after water because that's what will quench you. When we hunger and we thirst after righteousness, it is not something simple. 
because in that case we seek after it and the Bible says that we will find it no earthly source can satisfy the hunger and the thirst of the soul that the psalmist mentioned earlier whether it be material riches profound philosophies and satisfaction of physical appetites or honor and power solomon the great king after experiencing all the world has to offer he concluded to say that all is but vanity none brought the satisfaction and happiness for which every human heart longs the wise man's conclusion was that recognition of the creator and cooperation with him provided the only enduring satisfaction and we see this ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses 1 and 13. now about six or eight months after jesus gave this message on the sermon on the mount he gave another discourse there jesus spoke of himself as being the bread the bread of life and that is only by partaking of this can we sustain spiritual life and satisfy the hunger of our souls and those of us who hunger and thirst will be graciously invited to come to the heavenly provider to receive the supplies of food and drink that is without money and without a price and the longing of one's heart for righteousness is evidence that Christ has already begun to work in our hearts. So we're seeing here, when you as a person or me as an individual begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness, it is proof that Jesus is working on you. And even in the word it speaks about if we turn to God, he is the one who will take away our heart of stone and give us that heart of flesh and allow us to draw closer and closer to him and that is what he wants for us and looking at the word righteousness now the greek for this word is dikaiosun it comes from the word dike it means custom usage and thus right as determined by custom now in the new testament it is used for right as determined by the principles of the kingdom of heaven and in every instance of the new testament it is translated 94 times as dikaiosun and is translated to be righteousness now among the greeks righteousness consisted in conformity to accepted customs but to the Jews, it was essentially a matter of conformity to the requirements of the law as interpreted by Jewish tradition. However, for the followers of Christ, righteousness took a totally different meaning. Let's look at Romans chapter 10 and verse 3. It says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and go about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So as opposed to the Greeks and the Jews who would set what is right by custom, that is not how it goes when it comes on to matters of godliness and Christianity, what Jesus wanted us to understand. It is not about us going about establishing the righteousness for ourselves. It is about submitting ourselves to the righteousness of our God. The righteousness of Christ is both imputed and imparted. Imputed righteousness brings justification, but the justified soul grows in grace. Through the power of the indwelling Christ, he conforms his life to the requirements of the moral law as set forth by Jesus' own precept and example. This is imparted righteousness. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 4, it says to us, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit in this beatitude we are encouraged by jesus christ to hunger and thirst after the righteousness of god not our own righteousness but after the righteousness of god and it says we are blessed we are on the right path 
as it relates to our salvation and making it to heaven. If it's your first time here, this is a video in a series. I'll be linking the previous videos in the description for you to go to check out. I also have a free gift in the description, a Bible. Go there and download yours if you haven't already done so or if you don't have one at home already. Now, if you are a first time viewer, subscribe to the channel. Reason, because here I encourage you in the faith. If you're a Christian, you should be here because here is where we help each other to grow spiritually in making it into the kingdom of God. If you're watching and you're not a Christian, we're here for you. Join the community. You're the reason why we're making these types of content to teach you of your creator, your maker, so that you can make the decision that will change your life forever. Thank you for tuning in and I will be continuing on the book of Matthew. So stay tuned, subscribe to see upcoming videos. Thank everyone for watching and I'll meet you again very soon. Bye.